found out that Christ looks like a devil, how would you feel? Why? Because that's, that's the devil. What does the devil mean? What does it look like? Evil? What about you, bro? What is do, you, do you have uh, uh, experience with devil worshiping or being a uh, uh, devil? I worship nothing. Okay. You don't even worship self? I guess so. Well, because in, in uh, like, you know I see a baphomet on your yes, wrist. Yes, sir, you and on my hand, and you see a swastika So here. swastika, you depending on here. the way it's spinning or the way it's turning, uh -huh. one means war, the other one means peace, right? Then he has a baphomet, right? So if I were to prove to you that Christ's image looks like a devil, what would you feel after if I prove the real image versus the devil? But what would you feel about the real image? Okay, good, good. Let's see. If I may. Right here, who is this man? It's an image of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ, right? And from what we think is known to believe. So how does he really look? I don't know. That's, that's my, that was my question. Good, all right. So, question. For this pink, red man, where did they get that image from in the Bible? I don't know. How did, how did, I mean, I can't say. I can't say the Bible can't say. Let's, let's read it again. Only, only if, if, if the Bible tells me what it looks like. Okay, that's good. Let's go back to Revelation. Sir. Because now we have two images. Yes. We have one that's real, one and that's false. The image I have in my head. Now, we're going to pit these against each other, right? Let, let's let's play three strikes. Read. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Let's, that bit of information. Whose head and ha on their head is white and wool? Protection. Is it this man or is it this man? This man. This man. Strike one for him. I'm sorry, strike one for him. A check for him, right? Okay. Three strikes you out, right? Read. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So the eyes as a flame of fire goes into the whites of our eyes turning red. Why though? How how does a Negro's eyes, the whites of his eyes, turn red? Turn red? Yeah. I want you to look behind you, Patricia. What do you see right there? It says ABC beverages. It does. What in there can turn our eyes red? No, no, no. A drink yeah. that turns our eyes red. What is one of the drinks that can turn us red? Wine. wine. I'm going to show you. Christ drunk wine. That's why his eyes were red. Let's see. Read. Genesis chapter 49 verse 12. So now we're going to the past to prove the prophecy. Read. Okay. His eyes shall be red with wine. What? With wine. Read. And his teeth white with milk. So that red with wine goes into that image. Teeth white with milk goes into the laws are going to be in his mouth. That's what that's going into. So, who has red eyes? This man with this man. Strike two for this image. Read. Verse 15. And his feet might go to fine brass. What color is brass? It's brown. Good, good. Keep reading. <laughs> and his feet like onto fine brass, huh? as if they burned in a furnace. So, you remember the your mama jokes back in the day? Where it's like, you so black, like you burned in a furnace? Right. That's the first your mama joke right there. Yeah. Christ is so black, he burned in a furnace. That's how he looks. So again, who looks like they burned in the furnace? This man or this man? Keep reading. That, we, he already struck out. And his voice as the sound of many waters. So a very loud man. We have this mic to emulate, but we don't need it. Hey, shalom, we, can, we can talk to you just like how Christ talked to the multitude of people. What's up, man? So with that said, Patricia, uh, this the earlier man group should be here in the back. Talk loud. When you when you see on TBN, on uh, what is that? The, the Ten Commandments. How is he talking? 
good. Soft, Joe Osteen ish. So, yes, which one is the devil and which one is the uh, image? And when I say 49, devil, man, I'm just saying a deceiver uh, uh, or a liar. That's what a devil is. It's a deceiving spirit or a deceiving person. Same thing. Who is lying now? So you just learned, Patricia, that Christ's image is in the Bible. Right. We were never taught that, though. Why would your enemies teach you or educate you on your history so you can be better than them? Tell me. Why would your enemies, meaning these people that took your ancestors into slavery, why would they teach us, the children of our ancestors, why would they teach us anything to uplift us if we're supposed to be subject unto them? Why would they do that? They don't want us to know. Good. That's right. So if you are kept down from a lack of knowledge, you can't produce, correct? Then that's how you have the word nigger come about. Because you know niggard is a word. N-I-G-G-A-R-D. Means a stingy person. They created niggas here in uh, uh, Babylon the Great or United States of America. That's right. That Those people were manufactured. You know why? They act all the same. Any hood you go to, a nigga is a phenomenon. It, it really is. It's like watching the Nature Channel and looking at a different species of man. It Jesus. really is. Because it is a program of the mind. That's right. Instead of you knowing that your image come from the greatest man that walked the planet Earth. Now you look at this man as your God and what you're going to do unto him. Be subject unto his laws, unto everything that he teach you without no question. But when somebody brings the real image, now you question the real image versus something that you were spoon fed. Right. You just said it yourself, sis. It was to destroy us. It was to keep us down. Because why would, if I was your enemy, why would I tell you any information to make you uh, powerful over me? Why? Why? I'm not. <laughs> so, what would you call that? Deceiving, but that's war, sis. That, that's raging war on your people. What you got? Yes, give me that. I'm going to show you where... This group of people, the so-called Caucasians, did this in our history. They did it in the Greek history. Let me show you, read. First Maccabees chapter three, verse 28. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So at this time, we were actually physically fighting the so-called white man at this time. We were fighting the Greeks. They ransacked our temple took our bible and in our bible we had the images of our foremothers and forefathers they were black uh, melanated men and women but it says that they changed the images to theirs let's read it again first Maccabees chapter 3 verse 28 and laid open the book of the law so they laid open the bible wherein the heathen had sought to sought to paint the likeness of their images. So the heathen at this time were the Greeks. What color were the Greeks, sis? They were pink people. <laughs> there ain't nothing white about them. There ain't nothing pure about those people. Like, for instance, what good thing has the white man put on this planet Earth? One good, name one good thing that they've done as a people. What, name one good thing that that group of people, you like, you know what? God sent them on the planet to do that good thing. Because I'm going to tell you this, they will manufacture diseases and then have another team to say that, oh, look, we're helping you with the disease we manufacture. Right. That ain't nothing good. That's called control. So with that understanding, sis, read it again. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48, and laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their images. So this shows you that the images that was written in the book of the law that was painted was not in the image of the Greeks. Right. It was of the Jews. The Jews are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Not no Az Askenazi uh, white people. It's not them. What they did to us is, I'm gonna show you. You done with that? 
give me Deuteronomy 28. I'm gonna show you what they did because this is war. This happened during war. To change, what, what is the first thing that happens in war? They take over communication, right? Isn't books a form of communication? So if you attack our written records and paint your images, what are you saying? What are you declaring against my people? War. But why do we think that we're not at war? Why do we why are we so comfortable here? We don't want to be, but we are. You're born in it without knowing it. That's the worst type of soldier. You don't know or she don't know she a soldier. You you born into war, growing up behind enemy lines, and they're teaching you. That is deadly, sis. That's very deadly. But that's how we gotta think of it. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 16. No, 15 first to show the ramifications. Then 16. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass. So it's going to happen. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. There's a paradigm, meaning there's one reality that we were going to do God's commandments. There's another reality that we're not. So God is showing this reality y'all are not going to keep my commandments. What's going to happen? To observe, to do all his commandments Read. and his statutes, which I command thee this day, Read. that all these curses, all these what? curses. Is a curse a good thing or a bad thing? It's bad. So all these bad omens hey, are going to come this? upon us and do what? Shall come upon thee uh -huh. and overtake thee. So it's going to overtake us entirely. That means consume us entirely. To the point where you're so cursed, you don't even know you're cursed. You so crazy, you calling yourself blessed. That's how messed up we're gonna be as a people. Are we doing that today? Because it's it's the same thing from Rodney King. No justice, no peace. It was back in Rodney King's time. Right. And I, I thought it's 2022. Why are we still using the same tactics that we did in the 50s, in the 60s, in the 70s? Teach, Bob. That means nothing has changed. The decades have. The laws in which they implement certain uh, racial divides have changed, but has anything really changed? No. You still a nigga. Right. Rich, poor, you still a nigga. They just call you different. For, for somebody to call me black is an insult. It's an insult. Why? Nigger or Negro means what? What's the difference? That's an insult. You calling me a color, not the people that I come from. Right. And then I ain't black, I'm brown. We ain't black. His boots, black. His beard, black. That mask you're wearing, black. Your skin color, brown. But we call ourselves black people. We're misidentifying even ourselves by listening to who? Our enemy. That's right. But it, it takes a real person to wake up and see that. Can't read it. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, uh -huh. and cursed shall thou be in the field. So in the city, in the urban, we're going to be cursed. In the fields, in the country, we're going to be cursed. There's less than 2% of farmers that represent us. And you know that Monsanto is sending them fake seeds so they can't even grow. They can't grow their crop on time. Did you know that? So we're, we're at a disadvantage even in the field when it comes to that, when it comes to property, when it comes to health, nutrition, we're at a disadvantage in both the city and the country. So you can't tell me that this Bible ain't us. You can't tell me.
black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.